Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Your, Your Favorite, Favorite Auntie's Podcast. Oh, that was good! <laughs> we looked at each other. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Made my day. Um, all right, church announcements, friend. Listen, these are your church announcements. Mm-hmm. Govern yourself accordingly. Uh-huh. So, sooner, soon, 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 the live show is coming up. When is it coming up? May 3rd, okay? It is literally around the corner. Literally. If you have not gotten your tickets, get them now. Mm. Because when I tell you we have this many spots left, y'all did not believe us when we told y'all they the did. first time. They the first show we was had, greasy. y'all didn't think that me was greasy. They we did. told you. Mm-hmm. Get the tickets now. Mm-hmm. We are going to sell out. That's right. We sold out that show in two days. Yep. It was yep. two days. Mm-hmm. So I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now. It's not a marketing scheme. It is. It's quite literally not. We're trying to help. <laughs> like We are already halfway. Like, And not even just halfway. We're over half. So. Very few spots left. Don't don't wait for like a, a promo code. Because it ain't going to be named. It's not coming. <laughs> it is. Mm-mm. You're going to be waiting on something that's not going to happen. And don't ask for the live link. It will not be recorded. It will not. The only thing that's going to be recorded is the word that's already given to us. Huh? That's what was recorded. Come on now. Huh? But this, you the got logo. to be in the house. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, make sure you all show up to the live show May 3rd here in none other than Houston, Texas. We cannot wait to see you, hug you, and make sure you get that meet and greet add on. A couple people were like, well, I don't see the meet and greet. It is not a ticket type. I know when we had our first show, we had it as a ticket type. It is not this time. It is a general ticket. And then when, once you put it in the cart, you're going to make sure you add that add on. For the meet and greet. Absolutely. Add that add-on. We want to meet you. Listen, we do. Um, I think that's it for church announcements. I believe so. Okay. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What are we talking about today? I'm in a singing mood. Oh, okay. We are going to talk about <laughs> questions that need answers. Because mm-hmm. there are some questions that <laughs> need an answer. Quickly. And Amen. Amen. This is not ask the aunties. This is quite literally questions that we want to answer. It's common themes that we see in responses from you all or just in our life, period. Yeah. And so we're going to discuss them and see if we can get some answers to these questions. (sighs) Maybe. So, mm, I guess we're coming straight out the gate with it. Mm -hmm. If you are in a relationship... Should you or your significant other be hearting and liking all in people's DMs? Wait, you got to you got to rewind that because you put a lot of stuff all in one. Hearting a story and sliding into somebody's DM. Okay. So, you are in a relationship. You're in a relationship. Your yeah. man sees a girl, it could be his home girl, could be a regular girl, it don't matter. He sees her hearts her picture, hearts it. And then Slides up and it's like, oh, you look nice. Are you cool with that? I think it depends on the relationship. Because okay. random women, absolutely not. Somebody yeah. you just don't know, you really feel the need to heart their stuff. and con- No. Yeah. No, no, no. But I do have, like, pe- men who I know, like, that's my brother, who will heart yeah. something or be yeah. like, you look real not, you know, and it's yeah. not like that. It's yeah. not yeah. like that. Yeah. So I feel like you have to kind of assess the situation more so than like blanket, like, oh no, don't. Cause yeah. If that's your home girl, that's your partner, that's your friend, as the dude, okay, but I gotta know her. Mm. Like I it's just, but to know that my man is in somebody's DMs. Like, oh, you look nice. Oh, you look good. You don't know this girl from Adam. Or even if you do know her, but she's like a distant acquaintance, distant friend, or just, nah. If that's not your ace boon, she got to go. Mm-hmm. And you're going to have to go, too. Because mm-hmm. it's the optics of it all. Like, yeah. you got to be aware. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes dudes don't be understanding. Like, we're women, so we know how women yeah. do. Yeah. They looking for that one end. And you just saying, oh, you look nice. Or when they slide in your DMs, and see, this get on my nerves that I have to talk to my man about. Like, if they slide in your DMs. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Ain't no answering. Because as soon as you say even thank you, <laughs> that's it. That's the end. First of all, okay. Because, ladies, come on. We got to keep it real. Come on. We post stories on purpose. I can Listen, I probably got a story going right now. Mm-hmm. It's bait. Mm-hmm. And I just need this 
couple, <laughs> few. I need y'all to hit this line mm-hmm. because I posted this for you, boo. This yeah. was all for you, Buki. Yeah. And then you thinking that it's innocent whole time. You were the reason why I posted this. And then, because I can remember I had, I was with somebody and, you know, I saw that they were DMing and I was like, this person can say, no, your man was in my DMs. And what can I say? What can I say? I can't say anything. Y- you right, sis. He was there. Yeah. Cause, and it's like, if you give somebody an opportunity to say that you were somewhere, don't upset me. That's going to piss me off. <laughs> Clean, smooth. Yeah. Like You got to be careful. Yeah. And I feel like, because I've been on it on the other end where I think I'm just being polite, but it's like, no, this is just not uh, what you got, the rules of engagement anymore. Right, right, With right. With social right. media. It just, it doesn't work that way. As right. soon as you interact for a lot of people, that's their end. Yeah. That's just like, um, like I don't know if you've ever been out before and somebody tried to talk to you and be like, oh, no, I have a man. And they'd be like, well, are you happy? Right. You know, like right. as soon as you respond, it's like, oh, I can go with this. You yeah. respond it. Yeah. You got to be really careful. Because I know, I know for me, I don't respond to every DM I get. Mm. I do not. So if I'm actually responding to you or, first of all, if a, if I actually send a dude a DM, maybe I don't care nothing about what you got going on. I'm trying to see what's up. Mm-hmm. I might keep it cute. I might be, you know, keeping it cute, keeping it coy. Yeah. But like any two ways, I'm actually DMing you first. Bruh. No, I could care less about how you hooped when you was at the 24-hour fitness. I don't But, care. I mean, so when somebody responds to you, do you automatically view it as a romantically inclined response? It depends on who it is. Mm. It, it really depends on who it is because it's like, if you weren't in my DMs before, but now all of a sudden you are, it's like, this was your end. Because I got to think about what did they respond to? Mm-hmm. How are they responding? And then we just go from there. And then, like you said, all it takes is a thank you. Because my thing is, if you, if I say something to your story or something like that, you respond, thank you. And then I say something back to you and then you, we keep the conversation going, like, Mm -hmm. or vice versa. If I hit you with a thank you, you can't be nice to some dudes in your DMs because then they're going to want to start something. So you got to keep it real light. Like, so what I'll do is if I respond to something, I may just like heart the message or something like that and just leave it from there. I'm not going to engage anything or I might just leave it on red. Yeah, I I don't know. It was confusing for me when I was single because it would be like you would respond and then it never would lead to nothing. Mm -hmm. So it was like, oh, they just want to talk. You know what I mean? Like, you never ask for my number. You never say, oh, I want to take you out or I want to get to know you better. Like, they're literally just be in your DMs. And it's like, what are you you doing? There was one guy who was in my DMs for a hot little minute. And I was just like, what are you... I'm not about to talk to you in my DMs. Like they is... no, they will never ask for your number. That's why I'm like, do you automatically say, okay, they responded, this is romantic, or or no? Because sometimes I'm like, maybe it's not. Maybe I'm tripping. Mm, no. no. But even still, like he was like, yeah, and I'm pursuing pursuing who? From you, the DMs. There is no way you can be pursuing me through the DMs. It's just, it's just, and you've been in it here how long? That's like old boy who was asking me, uh, do I make you feel any kind of way? No. Boy annoyed. <laughs> you, that's how that's how you make me feel. No, we don't talk. What like, do you mean? That's not even what this is. <laughs> yeah, just, okay. You make me feel the ick. The that's bar you, is very low if you feel like, oh man, she really feels some kind of way about me because of social media. I wish you would. <laughs> Alrighty. Um <laughs> not alrighty. <laughs> alrighty. I want to skip down while we're on the topic of relationships. Okay. Um what do you tell your girls about your relationship? Like, how much do you keep to yourself? How much do you share? Okay. So, it you gotta... I'm a firm believer in certain girls can know certain things. Okay. You got to know your friends. You got to know, you got to your, know your friends. friends. Yeah. You got to know your friends. Uh-huh. So, when certain girls know certain stuff, first of all... I already know how, I know my friends and I know how they're going to respond. Sometimes I don't want the response you finna give me. So right. I'm not finna tell you. Right. I'm going to tell her. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it really just depends on what the subject matter is. Like if I find out that somebody that I'm with is doing something they ain't got no business doing, if I'm not ready to leave, I ain't telling nobody. Because now y'all going to be looking at him crazy. And then you're going to be looking at me crazy because I'm still with him. Mm-hmm. They say, let that man cheat in peace. Okay. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, you ain't gonna I, do that. No, seriously. I'm a. I am a firm believer in that. If you're not gonna do something, let that man cheat in peace. <laughs> let him cheat in peace. You bring it up for because the minute you start talking to him about it, you the other woman. 
<laughs> now you're the other woman. Uh, huh? Because she, she probably don't know about you, baby. Uh-huh. She don't. Nah. You know we're on, on his page. Nowhere in his life for real. Yeah. So you, just leave it alone. If you're not ready to leave that man, leave it alone. Mm-hmm. Unless you can, unless you have a relationship with your friend to where you can you can bounce back from it. Like, friend, I know this is what happened, yeah. but uh, we're going to work it out. Because once you tell me some sideways stuff, I'm going to remember the sideways stuff. Yeah. I forgive him, but I ain't forget. At all. I feel like I'm one of those friends where... Look, I understand. You go back, I get it. <laughs> I get It'd it. It be happening. So it's just like, um, I remember a while ago, one of my friends, you know, she got into it with her man. She was like, I don't know. I don't, I don't see it. I just, I can't see a way. And I'm like, well, look, whichever way you go, <laughs> whatever, whatever way you go with it, it's fine. So one minute I'm like, you know, is there, if things going to be okay, I'm trying to make sure, you know, she's straight, whatever. And I send her something. She's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, you know, we, we worked it out. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you, I'm bracing myself for either way it go because it's like I understand sometimes you're willing to look over things or just go through certain stuff or what have you. And what I would do and what you would do sometimes is just different. So, hey, you just got to know your friends. Mm-hmm. It's easy to say what you would do on the outside. <sighs> you get in that thing and it's like, ooh, I ate so many words in my last relationship. Hello? I was like, <laughs> Girl, <laughs> let the people be in their relationship. No, <laughs> it's okay. They are gonna break up a couple times. It's okay. It, it, no, no, for real. She Even going that, back. <laughs> maybe she gonna leave you before she leave him. Uh, <laughs> she gonna pick that man every time. Every time. And then, okay, so you remember that situation where, you know, me and somebody had broke up, and it was cool for a little while, and then I had broke no contact. <laughs> And I was stupid by myself for a while because <laughs> I was like, I'm not letting anybody in on this because I don't know what I'm. You I be knowing. I don't know which way I'm gonna go. Mm-hmm. So before I tell my girls, like, oh, you know, me and such and so started talking again, I'm just ain't nobody gonna know nothing mm-hmm. until I figure out what's going on. Y'all not gonna know what's going on. Yeah, you gotta create. Well, on the other end, you gotta create a safe space in your relationship, yeah. like. Men are such that they don't want to know that everything that they tell you is going to go to your girls. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, men need a safe space. Like, oh, okay, when I talk to her about this, she's not going to go tell her friend circle or her best friend or whatever. Yeah. Now, there's some <clears> stuff <throat> I feel like is important because I've been in situations with, with you where you mm. supported me in like, hey, like, nah, friend, this ain't it. And then also like, hey, friend, nah, like, chill out. Like, recently, yeah. you was like, friend, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. And I'm not saying you wrong. Your feelings are valid. (laughs) Also, don't do nothing right now. (laughs) Not right now. Don't you do nothing. (laughs) So um, it's important, I feel like, on both ends. But like you said, you got to know your friends and how much to share. But make sure you're not running and telling every single thing your man tell you to your friends. That's not good. I've had to work on that. Yeah. For sure. I think sometimes it's hard, especially for people like me who can't hold water. But, (laughs) you know... I did I did recognize and realize, like, okay, this is something that I could share. This is something that I don't need to share. This is something that I'll talk about. Excuse me. This is something that I'll talk about when I fully make my mind up, whether I'm going to stand, stand, or coming. Because one thing you don't feel like doing is, like, backtracking your words. Like, That's right. It sucks. If you're not sure if y'all broke up for real, for real, but leave wait. it alone. Just wait. Give it a business week. Uh, a business week. <laughs> Five business days. Because <laughs> you do sometimes feel differently and then different things impact your thoughts at that time. And then it's just a lot. Yeah, Relationships are a lot. And navigating them while also trying to be a good friend and talk to your friends about them, it's not, it's not always easy. Yeah. It's not always easy. But it's, it's just so funny when, like, you do talk to your girl and she's telling you about, like, what's going on. Because, it's like, you be so down. Like, nah, bump that. Right. Okay, like, no, nah, friend, you need to stay. No, nah, friend, you need to go. Because X, Y, and Z. And then your friend come back and be like, well, we we still together. Mm. <laughs> mm. So I should probably take away all the things that I <laughs> put into motion. Because one thing about me, you don't mess with my friends. Don't play with them. Because now I've already been plotting on what needs to happen if and when y'all do break up. <laughs> I already have plans. Like, God forbid. Just say y'all don't work out, baby. Please, I'm finna. What? (laughs) 
like that. What is that saying? Is hell hath no uh, fury like hell hath scorn? Hell hath no fury like a woman's best friend it's who got like, scorn. Right? No, it's the <laughs> friends that be more mad than you. <laughs> right? It's like, okay, right. calm down. It's like, did this happen to you or me? Okay, <laughs> you in it with me? Hello. <laughs> That'd be, the thing. That'd be the thing that get me because I no, know you that... really be worked up when I'm like, calm down, friend. <laughs> no, nah, because it pissed me off because <laughs> now I'm mad. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it didn't even happen. One to of you. us got to have a sound vibe, friend. One of us, between the two of us. It, yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> okay, friend, I got, to, I got to ask you this. What? Should your best friend ask to borrow money if she has a man? Uh, she married. To... Well, listen. This this is an interesting topic. Mm-hmm. Ideally, no. Mm-hmm. Ideally, no. But knowing your friend, you may make some exceptions. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. What'd you say? Okay. I feel like if your friend has a man, especially they've been with that man for a long time, or, or you know whether it's a whether they're married or engaged or boyfriend or whatever, ask that man for some money because he don't mind asking you for nothing else. Mm. I don't I don't feel like any woman. Well, that's not gonna come off right if I say it like that. I, okay, I go ahead. you but you feel me though. Like I see what you're saying, but if it's a situation like they're both like in the trenches, they can't ask him for the money. That's what I'm saying. Okay, okay. If it's my thing is, if you're asking me for money because you don't feel comfortable asking your man okay, for money, okay, that's different. That's where I'm coming we, from. Like we, yeah, connectedly don't have it, and I need yeah. something. That's yeah, different. then I'll then okay, I got you. That's okay, not, okay, okay. That okay. is nothing. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna still give my homegirl the money anyway, just for, whether whether she got a man or not. But it's just like, do I feel like you should be asking your friends for money when you have a man? No. Mm. Like you, if you have a man who is in your life and he got it, you just don't want to ask or you don't want him to know you need it. That's a problem. Mm. That's a problem. I feel that. Especially if y'all are like really involved with each other and y'all are rocking and you don't feel comfortable asking that man for money. Something is going on. Mm -hmm. But I mean, what if it's just a pride thing more so than a, a, I can't ask him. But that's your man. Ultimately, if that's who you're going to be with, you you about to make a covenant with somebody that you won't even ask for money. That's a deeper thing to me, to me. And it's not that I don't understand what you're saying. It's just like pride or no pride, that is your man. You should be able to get money from him. Mm-hmm. If y'all are serious with each other, ask your man. Now, of course, it's your girl. I'll give it to you. It's, it's That's not a problem. But on the inside, I'm going to be like, well, why you ask him? When you get the money, you expect them to give it back to you? It depends on the amount. Just like a little $40, $50, like, okay, whatever. But when we start getting hundreds, thousands, and it's like, okay. Mm-hmm. But also, I don't lend money that I need back. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to need it back, mm-hmm. then I can't give it to you. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now, I would, I, but all of my friends, they, you know, like they're integral people, so they would give it back, but. So what about the opposite way around? Would you prefer that your man ask you for money or ask his homeboys? <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, I don't, okay. Let me say this. <laughs> it's kind of hard for me to have this conversation because a man that I'm in love with can have my wallet. <laughs> they can have with it. Listen, because I don't mind buying and doing for my man. If I'm in love, yeah. And my man needs something if he, for whatever reason, he down at that moment because, okay, I got you. I got you. You need something? Okay. Because mm. I, I know if I'm with a man, I could ask him for money. Mm. Any, any two ways, I, the man that I'm with, I could, I could go to him and ask him for that. Mm. So in that very same right, I would want him to know that he has a partner in me. So I wouldn't mind giving it to him. And I would prefer him to ask me than have to go outside and just ask his boys. But also, I would want him to go get it too. Like, mm. if you know you need it, go get it. Like, go get it. But I still got you, though. Okay. What about you? What you do, <laughs> baby? <laughs> um, no, I'm I'm the same way in that, you know, you know, I'm going to spend it on my man. Yeah. If you say you like, oh, you like it in this color? I'm huh? going to go get four more. Huh? Um, But also, I don't know. I've just been in that position where it's like, as soon as that man asked me for money, 
it never stopped. <laughs> So like you got to be careful, cause if you know the first time you're like, oh yeah, baby, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like once he crosses that barrier, yeah, it's hard to then jump back. Do you know what I'm saying? No, I hear you. In a non-married situation, also, yeah. let me clarify. Yeah, I hear you, but I also think that that has a lot to do with the man himself. Mm -hmm. Like, I think we can agree that the gentleman that did that to you. That was his character at that point in time. Mm -hmm. You know, he ain't he ain't have it. Mm -hmm. So of course, and he knew you had it and you were gonna get it. So he just stuck with that. Mm -hmm. Um going forward, I would think a man that you were with, if he needed it, something had to have happened. Because I know at this point in your life, you are with successful men. Like, you know, you know how to pick them at this point. Period. And so if he would, if he needed it and he came to you and at, was asking for it, I know that it would be for a good reason. And he's not the type of man that I, that I think would like mooch off of you. Oh, no, 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 so, no. Definitely not talking about current. Yeah, of I'm course. Yeah, of in course. The past. I've yeah. had it happen before. So I just caution women, like, yeah. let that man go get it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, if it's just really dire, yeah. like, I'm not finna let nobody go hungry or nothing yeah. like that. But other than that, like, you really do got to let that man go get it. Yeah. You do, yeah. You really, really do, cause it it boils down to the, to the character, cause then you become the crutch, yeah. And it's like, okay, well, I don't have to hustle as hard. If he's not already just a born hustler, yeah, it's like, oh, my girl got it, you yeah. know. And it's like, I do, but I also want you to like get it. I gotta take care of my, you know, yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, the type of women that you and I are, we're we're going to take care of the men that are in our lives in a in a sense of creating that safe space, creating that peace, creating that dynamic to where like you got a partner, no, I'm in this with you, like yeah. making them feel like safe. Yeah. So if you are creating that I got you in that same right, they're gonna create that I got you. They're gonna want to take care of you. Yeah, make sure it's reciprocal. Yeah. I will say stuff be happening in my relationship, but I'm gonna be taken care of. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give them that. I'll be getting what I want. And then, you know, stuff just don't work out. But <laughs> Yeah, just a caution, just because, baby, T.T. been through it, okay? Okay. Don't go through what T.T. went through. Not when you don't have to. Huh? What about dating outside of your beliefs? Can't do it. Even dating within your beliefs. Huh? <laughs> but, I mean, it's it's a hard, it's a very hard pass to mm -hmm. date outside of my belief system. Very hard pass. And he may be an amazing man. However, comma, you're not mine. Mm. Because when I think about possibly having a family with this man, what would we what would we do? How would we raise our children? What would the both. and let them choose? Mm -hmm. No, they're gonna have to choose you this day. Ah uh, <laughs> and, and choose them what kids I have. got to choose either way. Right. But you coming out the womb ch getting chose. <laughs> <laughs> you coming out with one choice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the way, the truth, and the uh -huh. light. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, mm -mm. no one can get to the father. <laughs> Except Let they go through the side. Uh -huh. And you got to know that. Because, mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> say lie. But for, for me, it's a hard pass. Now, I could befriend somebody who is, who doesn't believe the same type of things that I believe. Mm -hmm. Because our lives are intertwined in that covenant way. Mm -hmm. You know, before God. Mm -hmm. But, to actually be with a man who didn't believe the same things that I believe. Again, it's it's tricky even being with a man who does believe what you believe. Very true. Very true. So I can't even imagine what the relationship dynamic would be like if he believes something else. Mm -hmm. Like, it just, I can't, mm -mm, it's a no for me, dog. Okay. It's, a, it's an interesting question, and I don't know if we want to get into it now, but it's just like... Do you do you have single Christian women just keep believing for the Christian man and staying single, knowing the the ratios of Christian men? Mm -hmm. Um, or do you say, hey, like you have a partner? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think it's a recipe for disaster. What is and dating outside of your belief system? I, but that people do it all the time. There's people married. It depends on I think it depends on how much your faith impacts your life because oh, yeah. that that is a is a varying scale. Yeah. Like there's people who are Christian, but it doesn't really impact like their day to day life, their decision making, their value. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they just no, believe Jesus died for them and leave it at that. That's it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I think it depends on how much your faith really 
impacts your life. Mm. So for someone like me, where my faith really does impact a, a lot of the decisions that I'm making on how I govern my life, it would be a hard pass for me. So, but when you phrase it like that or put it in that perspective, I can see how it wouldn't be that big of a deal to someone else. Yeah. Especially when they waver in, oh, I don't, do I want to use the word waver? A waver in what? In in their belief system. Like, it's like, oh, or they're lackadaisical in, in their belief. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people that say they, they believe and they're believers and you will look at their lifestyle and be like, you yeah, sure? You know what I'm saying? Oh, no. So, I don't know. I, I feel the sisters who are at that point in life where they're like, I've been single for a really long time and you telling me to wait on a Christian man and there's not that many of them. Like, I, you know, like I, I hear the, yeah. I hear the, I don't want to say the complaint, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so is that keeping them single? I guess it depends on how important singleness and stuff is to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Okay. What did you bring to social media when it comes to your life? Let me tell you something. There's some people out there on the internet right now. There's some of that stuff that they're telling y'all they couldn't beat it out of me. <laughs> you could not beat this information out of me. You understand what I'm saying? And, like, y'all are wild. Like, I just, like, knowing how much people put on the internet is insane. Yeah, they do put a lot on there. Um, the social media world is just so much different. I miss the days where there was some, like, mystery. Yeah. I miss the days when I didn't know every single thing. Like, I really don't need to know what you ate today. Like, I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need to know that. And, yeah. like, the overshare that happens constantly. Like, yeah. people don't even have private moments no more. Like, literally, even within the private moment, they're sharing. I was just yeah. thinking... um, how I think we've talked about how we would like to be get engaged or whatever. And I was just thinking like, I wouldn't want it to be so super public because I just know somebody going to pull out their camera phone, record the whole thing and post it before I get a chance to tell anybody about what happened for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's really a thing now. Like every Mm -hmm. single thing that goes on in people's lives, it's not even you sometimes posting it. It's somebody else that will record it and post it before you get get an opportunity that's wild to me it's crazy yeah. and the way the algorithm works oh and then like even just uh i've seen stuff about people passing where somebody will post oh such and such passed or whatever and the family's like ah, we would love to make an announcement about the transition of our family member right right we can't because you were so busy ready to post and it's like come on y'all come on Social media, like, I get on for sure for the aunties, but I don't get on as much anymore because it just irritates me. Yeah. Like, I, it's just a bunch of information like, baby, I don't need to know. We don't need to know this. Just live your life. I think when it comes to, like, super personal stuff, that's where I got to draw the line. Like, when my when you and I were on live, when my little sister called me and told me that my grandfather had passed away, I immediately got off. I'm not thinking about... Mm-hmm. I'm not thinking about that. Like, oh, let me inform. Let me say, let me, I think it's maybe like two or three days or something like that after when I was like, okay, y'all, like Mm -hmm. my granddad passed, you know, whatever. It's hard. Like y'all, or like they'll be holding your, their family members like in on their deathbed and they're like holding them or like, let me get this video and it's, I understand if you just want to have a video still holding that person, but why are we posting why? it? Right. And largely, I mean, I guess if your page is somewhat to where, and I don't know if very many people pages like this anymore, where it's like literally just people you know. Yeah. But for the most part, we all have people on our social media who we don't know. At all. From Adam. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I'm like, why would you even share that? Yo, baby, uh, six hours old. Baby, we don't <sighs> need to see. Still got the sludge on it. <sighs> Y'all got to keep some things sacred because that stuff affects your mental health. Everybody ain't for you. I don't know who needs to hear that. Yeah. Everybody's not for you. Yeah. And you giving them access to personal, intimate information, personal, intimate moments, and you think people are happy for you, Mm -mm. and they are not. They're not. You got to be really careful about that. I know that there was um, this really dope rapper. She's pregnant, you know, having her second child. And somebody was like, is it just me or does her stomach look weird? This is a pregnant woman. Let that woman be pregnant. Why are you concerned about her stomach and what she's done with her body and stuff? It's just like, 
just like you said, people aren't happy for you. No, they're not. People, she's announcing that she's bringing life into the world, and you concerned about how her stomach look, baby? How your stomach look, huh? Without the baby, huh? huh? <laughs> <laughs> now you better talk. <laughs> Be incredibly for real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, let's just for whatever reason, though I don't agree. For whatever reason, let's just say her stomach does look weird. She can fix it. You can't. Uh oh. Huh? Mm -hmm. Oh okay. It's and it's wild to me, like when I read people's comments and they really feel like they know people yeah. off social media. Yeah. Like for people to be like, uh, they'll be watching a I'll see the comments like on Shade Room or something yeah. of a celebrity. Or, yeah. Well, I know that that's the kind of person they are because you don't know what kind of person they are. At all. You don't. Like, you don't know these people. And this illusion of social media that you know people because you see what they post on there, y'all. Some people just put on a persona. They're just not even want like you that to in real life. be very for real. And the people really feel like, okay, mm -hmm. it bothers me. Because I feel like something is wrong. No, something is wrong. For real. This is a generation of mentally ill people. No, like, and it's just normal. Like, y'all don't know these people. Y'all know that, right? Like, social media is not a real place. <laughs> it's, it's not. Somebody said that, you know, when we were in high school, how people who weren't right necessarily who weren't right in the head, they were in their own classes, and now they just in the world existing. That's true. And it's like, these people know. They, like, they don't have it all. Mm -hmm. These precious little babies, they don't have it. Mm -hmm. It's like social media is like an alternate reality. It is. It is. I can't do it. I can't do it. Mm-hmm. So how do you feel like you would form a friendship at this point? Ooh, child. <laughs> you say no new friends. <laughs> I'm, ugh, how would I form a friendship at this age? <laughs> I wouldn't. I don't, you creating your own <laughs> option? No. <laughs> I wouldn't. Every friendship that I've gained past the age of 30 has been just like a, it just happened. Yeah. It wasn't like intentional or it was really the other person pushing for it. Like I've had somebody come up to me like, hey, I know this about you and we know this person in common and I really feel like we have a lot in common. Like, let's be friends. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, yeah. I'm not against that. Yeah. But as far as me, like, forming from scratch at 33, <laughs> woo, it's going to be a no for me. Mm. It's going to be a no. I'm not 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 open to forming friendships. Yeah. But for me to put forth that from scratch effort for friendships, yeah. I just don't see myself doing it right now. Mm. Mm -hmm. So for me, I I'll make a friendship out of anything. Yeah. Like I'll meet you in the bathroom and be like, oh my God, like your outfit, like, no, you really put that on. Mm -hmm. Let me have your number. Like I can't even imagine myself having somebody else that I need to connect with. Like I already have people that I'm like, dang, I ain't talked to so and so in so long, and I ain't talked to this person. And I'm yeah. just like, I can't even imagine having another person that I need to check in with. How you doing? What's going on? We need yeah. to meet up. We need to see each other. Cause I'm like, I can't keep up with who I got right now. Fair. I I don't. I don't. Mm. Hmm. That's funny. I can't. I don't want to talk on the phone no more than what I talk on the phone right now. Well, I, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, I, this is the first time I even heard your voice in days, but we'll talk about Because I was that out of camera. town. I just, and that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I literally don't have time yeah. for, to, for anyone or anything else. I had something come up. I had to turn down and be like, hey, love you so much, but I just don't have the capacity. And right. I don't want to neglect this that you, that you're doing. Yeah. I just don't have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a fair thing. You standing up for yourself because I know old me would have been like, oh, let me yeah, figure it out. Me, yeah, because I thought about it. I was like, yeah. well, if I just do this and then I could just do, I just, I can't. You can't do it, babes. I already feel like even when I'm in town, I'm out of town quite a bit, but even when I'm in town, I don't even really watch TV that much anymore because mm -hmm. it's like, I don't watch TV during the day because of work. Then when I get off of work, I need to connect with you. I need to connect with my man. I need to do this. And then by the time I turn on the TV, I don't want to not talk and look at the TV, but I can't yeah. focus on the TV because I'm talking. And so a lot of nights, like, I'm like, I ain't watch TV today. It was on. Yeah. But I didn't watch it. Yeah. So I'm I'm at capacity, friend. I really am. Oh, that sugar foot. I am. I am. Well, you're doing it well. If you need anything, just let me know, honey. <laughs> I got you. Can you just, like, duplicate me? That would be cool. 
well, uh, <laughs> I, I I could talk to somebody. I'm I'm sure we can do something. Figure something out. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll have your people call my people. <laughs> well, they got AI now. They do. Maybe I could do no. Maybe not. Mm. Say la. All right. Listen, this has been a, another incredible episode of Your Favorite Auntie's Podcast. Bye.